hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, January 19th, 2016 in the boardroom of the Administration Building, 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey. The purpose of the meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and to transact any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act, the Westfield School Board, on Tuesday, January 14th, 2016, caused to be posted at the Office of the Board of Education, located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Dana, can we have a roll call? Mark Freeman. Here. Brendan Galligan. Robert Garrison. Here. Chris Langhart. Here. Ginny Lights. Here. Gretchen Olick. Here. Peggy Astor. Here. Charles Ostroff. Mitch Slater. Here. Can you guys join me in the flags? <coughs> I, pledge, I, pledge I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, announcements. Do you have any announcements, Rob? Do you have I do. Uh, performing Arts. Westfield High School's Choral Department announces that 11 students were accepted into the Central Jersey Music Education Association's Region Course. <coughs> Congratulations to the following students who were accepted from hundreds of students who auditioned. Noah Bram, Allison Brown, Laura Brumfield, Charlotte Fontaine Jardine, Kylan Kramer, Joey uh, Maldonado, Olivia McElhaney, Abby Rothenberg, Lauren Singer, Laura Serace, and Max Wasilewski. Thank you. Chris, anything? Uh, yes. Uh, I apologize in advance if I get anybody's okay. name wrong. Congratulations to the following students who were selected to this year's Region Band, which performed this weekend at Montgomery High School. Danielle Gabuzda, Symphonic Band, Piccolo. Alistair Capadia, Symphonic Band, Bassoon. Michael Bergman, Symphonic Band, E-flat, Alto, Clarinet. Matthew Schiff, Symphonic Band, B-flat, Contra, Clarinet. Sophia Gonzalez, Nolde, Symphonic Band, Trumpet. Mark Kostiak, Symphonic Band, Euphonium. Michael Hogue, Wind Ensemble, E-flat, Clarinet, and B-flat, Clarinet. It should be noted that Michael placed first overall in the region on E-flat, Clarinet. And Dale Byart, Wind Ensemble, Trumpet, who placed second overall in the region on Trumpet. Band Director Chris Vitale reminds us that these are great accomplishments within some very tough competition. And I'd also like to give congratulations to Caitlin Kim, a sixth grader at Roosevelt Intermediate School who won second place in the Crescendo International Piano Competition for the second consecutive year, earning her a performance at Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall, very impressive. Hey, thanks. Uh, this is always a, uh, a pleasure for me to make this announcement. Um, it's that time of year and Washington School will proudly present Please Don't Stop the Music, an original musical production that tells the story of how four determined elementary school students, with a little help from some of their so-called celebrity friends, save music in Westfield schools. For those of you that aren't familiar with Washington School show, it's been going on, I believe this is the 69th year. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful tradition that I was honored to be part of for 12 years. And um, each, each year the shows keep getting better and better. And um, I, I know this year will be wonderful again. Performances are Friday, January 29th at 8 o'clock and Saturday, January 30th, uh, 1.30 matinee and 7 o'clock, all held at Roosevelt Intermediate School. Tickets are $13.50. They can all be purchased online um, at the, one of those links that say west.booktix.com. And again, if you've never seen the Washington School show, it is written by parents, it is directed by parents, the music is made up of parents in the band, um, the dancing, the choreography, uh, the kids come out on Saturday for the matinee, um, it's the, probably one of the great fundraisers in Westfield history. I, I can go on for hours, but, um, um, and it used to star former members, Rich Matesic and uh, Lucy Bigler too, so I will give them a shout out. But, 
Um, I look forward, as always, to see the show. And if, if you can get there, it's, it's going to be great. Thanks. From the intermediate schools, congratulations to this year's Geography B first place winners. At Roosevelt Intermediate School, the winner is eighth grader Jack Morantz. At Edison Intermediate School, seventh grader Max Shalaba earned first place. Both of these top winners will set for a state qualifying test to determine advancement to the state competition that will be held this April. We wish Jack and Max the best of luck in the next round. Thanks, Jenny. Brendan, do you have anything? I uh, do not. Mark? No, ma'am. Peggy? Uh, yes, I have an announcement from Lincoln School. Um, the Westfield Public School District is now accepting applications for the integrated preschool program for the 2016-2017 school year. Located at Lincoln School's Early Childhood Learning Center at 728 Westfield Avenue, the integrated program, which uses the creative curricul curriculum for preschool, is comprised of general education students and students who have been found eligible for special education. General education students will be selected for this program by lottery. Deadline for applications is February 26. Please check the Lincoln School website for more information or call Lincoln School at 789-4455. Thanks. The next Board of Education meeting will be held Tuesday, February 2nd at 7.30 p.m. here at 302 Elm Street. The complete agenda for the meeting will be posted on the board website on Friday, June 29th. So I take this opportunity to recognize the public for agenda items only. Does anyone want to come? Seeing no one, we will turn to the first and only superintendent's report, Dr. Dolan. Thank you. Um, those who are um, used to either viewing this uh, meeting on television or on our website or attending in person know that we've been talking about uh, the facility needs in the district um, for months and months and months. Uh, we first started talking about the potential of having a bond back in May uh, officially and have at each of our public meetings given updates and talked about the needs and the options and the plans, et cetera. But now, the uh, time for those two bond questions to go to the public is upon us. This is the last public board meeting before um, those questions are brought to the public. The vote will be on Tuesday, January 26th. And, um, and we've been trying to put out um, a great deal of information, both at these public meetings, as well as uh, on our website, as well as um, information on um, the local television stations. And we'll continue to do so until next week because it is up to the community and we hope that the members of the community do come out and vote. So with that, um, I'm going to turn the presentation over to our business administrator, Dana Sullivan, uh, who is going to review the aspects of the two questions in the bond that are being presented next week. So tonight we're going to do something a little different. Um, we had a, um, ta a video done that shows some of the projects that we hope to get done. Um, that video is on our website for anybody who wants to look at it on the website, but we thought we would show that tonight. And at the end of the video, I'll stop on a couple of um, slides and just kind of summarize again what we've presented over the last couple of months about the projects and the cost of the projects. Thank you for taking a few minutes to learn about the proposals in the school bond referendum to be held on Tuesday, January 26th. There are two questions for voters to consider in the bond referendum. As the superintendent, I can attest to the fact that all the projects are important to maintain the safety and security of our students, to ensure access to technology in our curriculum, and to provide functioning spaces for our students to learn, to congregate, and to perform. Let's learn about the projects from those who are in our schools. Most recently, people seem to recognize me as the coach of the state championship football team here at Westfield High School. But first and foremost, I am an assistant principal here with the responsibility for safety and security for the entire staff and student body. One of the most crucial projects in the January 26 referendum is the replacement of fire alarms in 10 of the school district's buildings. I don't need to emphasize the importance of replacing these units, they are more than 20 years old. 
Additionally, we need to replace key safety communication systems in all of our schools. The drill is now over. It is safe to return to the building. These are used in everyday operations and are critical in situations such as an evacuation or a lockdown drill, which unfortunately we cannot ignore. As an elementary school teacher, I'm very excited that the bond referendum includes upgrading internet access. I've been teaching in Westfield for 17 years and a lot has changed and with new technology comes new opportunity for the kids to learn. We use technology in the classroom to enhance our learning. It's a great tool to have and it needs to be dependable. Right now I actually only have internet access in half of my classroom space, which means I have to move my kids out into the hallway instead of letting them work at their desks if we want to use laptops and the internet. I'm pretty sure that my colleagues in the other six elementary schools are pretty excited about the idea of having internet access available to them as well inside our classrooms. Our district recently had an energy audit conducted by the state which confirmed what we had anticipated. We need to replace the boilers at four schools, Jefferson, Wilson, Roosevelt, and here at Westfield High School. Each of these schools have boilers that are between 35 and 50 years old, and everyone knows that boilers are essential to the operation of our schools. The newer boilers will be more efficient and require less yearly repairs to ensure that we aren't wasting money on our natural resources. The district is continuing its dedication to energy conservation, as is evident by the multiple Energy Star Awards we've received and by the millions of dollars in savings we've had over the past eight plus years. I am pleased that the Westfield Board of Education has responded favorably to our citizens who have suggested renovations to both auditoriums in the intermediate schools. Roosevelt is now nearing its 90th anniversary and Edison is nearing its 58th. These are old buildings with old auditoriums. Thankfully, improvements have been made over the years but anyone who has been to the auditorium recently can attest to the need for current updates. We need to replace the floors, seats, sound systems, and upgrade the lighting for sure. We not only use these auditoriums for performances, but for academic assemblies and instruction. And with the proposed addition of air conditioning, the auditoriums can be utilized when the weather is uncomfortably hot. We want our stages to produce the next generation of Paper Mill Playhouse Award winners. We want our families and the public to effectively hear and see the many events held in our auditorium. And I know I speak for Edison Principal Dr. Bolton when I say that most importantly, we want to provide our more than 1,500 intermediate school students an environment that is conducive and productive for learning. Thank you. One of the most important things to remember about the bond referendum is that the state of New Jersey has already determined that all the projects are eligible for state funding in the amount of 40 percent. Since school district budgets are capped, we cannot finance these projects through our annual budget. But even if we could, we would be paying 100 percent of the costs. I look forward to taking advantage of the 40 percent savings and implementing these projects to maintain our student safety and to help support our students' education. Please remember to vote on Tuesday, January 26th. The polls open at 7 a.m. and they remain open until 9 p.m. Thank you. I'm just gonna stop the video for one second so we can kind of yeah. just review. Um, so proposal one is what we've been calling the safety, security, and technology. Um, the fire alarm issues saw a picture of the fire alarms, you could tell they're at least 20 years old in 10 of our 12 buildings. Um, so they are out of date and in need of replacement. Um, the safety and security systems in all 10 schools are also um, at least 20 years old and need to be replaced with much more modern um, systems that are gonna give us, it's gonna tie right into our network and give us a lot more flexibility in communicating between schools and within the schools. Um, the switches and the Wi-Fi upgrades in all the elementary schools. Um, as you know, we've done the high school. Um, two years, two summers ago, we did the high school. Last summer, we did the two intermediate schools. And this summer, we'll continue with all of the elementary schools. 
um, and we have some of the cost of the upgrades in the operating budget to maximize state aid for certain parts of the um, cost, which is for equipment, and the wiring and the cabling is, is in the referendum to maximize state aid for that. Um, we have three schools where we're going to replace multi-purpose room floors. Um, the boilers, you saw the four schools, they're all 35 to 50. I believe one of them might be even in excess of 50 years old. Um, and then we have a gym partition door at the high school um, that is not working properly and needs to be replaced. Um, we currently have two schools, McKinley and Roosevelt, that have certain parts of the building that are not accessible through using a wheelchair. Um, so we're going to install lifts and um, two, two different types of lifts in those schools to make the whole building accessible. So proposal one is an estimated cost of $8.6 million. Um, if we decide to sell the bonds over a 10-year term, the cost to an average homeowner would be $36.60 per year. And if we decide to sell over a 20-year term, the cost would be at, um, about Sorry, did I just say that back? Yeah, I think yeah. it's 36, 60, with, uh, 20 years and 62, 83 for 10 years. Uh -huh. um, just to stop here for a second, some of the questions that we've been getting are, well, how do we determine whether we sell the bonds for 10 years or 20 years? Um, so what happens is if the referendum gets approved next Tuesday, sometime probably in the spring when we're getting ready to award contracts for the projects that are going to start next summer, will go forward with a bond sale. At that time, we'll take a look at the interest rates, the debt that we currently have, and the payoff on that debt, um, and determine where we can get the, the most advantageous terms, whether we bond it over 10 years or 20 years. So that, that's what, at the point we make the decision of how long to sell the bonds. <laughs> Proposal number two. Um, so these are the auditorium renovations at Roosevelt and Edison. So in, this is estimated to cost $4 million. These plans are just estimates at this point. Um, we don't have um, construction documents or anything of that nature yet, but what we are planning on doing at this point is replacing all of the seats in the auditorium, um, and then we, that will include installing seats for um, Bar what we call barrier-free seats, which would be for people in wheelchairs. Um, we would replace the flooring in the, whole build in the whole room. We would replace the sound system, electrical upgrades, lighting upgrades, install acoustical treatments. Um, again, barrier-free access in that room to the stage we would provide, um, and we would provide air conditioning in those buildings. Um, this bond is estimated at $4 million, and if we decide to sell these bonds over a 20-year period, the average homeowner would see an increase of $16.88, and if we decided to sell them over a 10-year period, it would be $29.39. So I think at this point I'm going to stop. I can't remember what the next slide is or the rest of this video, but the – well, actually, let me let the video go, and then I'll go back to it. <coughs> So last week we had a meeting, community meeting. We've had a number of community meetings um, where people attended and asked questions. And some of the questions that came from that meeting I just wanted to address here. Also, we do have um, frequently asked questions also on our website. So with the video, frequently asked questions, the PowerPoints are on there. There's a lot of information on the website for anybody who um, needs additional info. So some of the questions that were asked, what if the cost of the projects is less than projected? Um, we can only, we will only spend what we, we will only sell bonds for the amount we spend. So for instance, with the roofs, we had gotten approval from the community to sell $13.6 million worth of bonds. We wound up only selling $10.1 million worth of bonds because the projects came in much less than we had estimated. So we never spent that additional money. We won't spend that money, and 
that will just be a savings to the taxpayer. The same thing will happen with both of these if the projects don't cost as much as we estimate. Um, the second question was if we spend less than the estimated amount, can the funds be used for something else? No. The, we submitted applications to the state of New Jersey with projects on those applications, what the renovations that we plan to do. Um, so we can only spend within those project applications. Um, and nothing that's, we can't use that money for anything that hasn't been approved already by the state of New Jersey. Um, and then the other question was more about the auditoriums, which I've already um, answered. So I think that was most of the questions that we had from the public. Is there, if there's any other questions from the board or from anybody in the public here? We can Dana, just to follow up on the two questions about the amount of the bond sold, we also can't sell in excess of whatever the, the public uh, votes and approves, correct? No, that's if right. they approve it. Right. So if we go out, we, we have to go out to bid for all of these projects. So if we went out to bid and the cost was more than these amounts, we wouldn't be able to proceed with that. And so on what basis do we think our guesstimates are reliable? Well, we rely on an, an architect that we've had experience with for many years in this district, and all he does is school districts. Um, so he's very familiar with our codes and doing construction documents for um, school districts. Um, so we're we're very certain that that there's the estimates are high enough to cover the cost of the project. And one of the questions that we got on Thursday night from a gentleman who's here, and I hope he'll come to the podium and ask questions directly if he has them, is uh, so I, I, it is safe to assume that the state wouldn't approve it and that he wouldn't make a guesstimate that didn't include demolition costs. If there's, for instance, if there's asbestos found in the auditoriums, and all of those factors were contemplated in coming up with the estimate that was submitted to, and approved by the state, correct? Yes, yes absolutely. Um, does anybody else have anything they want before we invite the public up to, to say or to ask of Dana or anything? Brendan. I just think uh, it's worth noting that George has been working with Westfield for many years and knows our buildings inside and out, and the odds of him overlooking something are slim to none. I guess I'd just like to say is, I guess now the, uh, the, the board member with the second most um, tenure. <laughs> Um, hard to believe um, that I've been on board for six years and when I ran for Board of Education one of the things that were was very critical for me to understand was financial responsibility fiduciary responsibility and how things worked and I guess if there was a, a movie that would call what I knew about the Board of Education it would be clueless <laughs> um, because clearly I had I thought I knew a lot until I joined the board, and thanks to Ginny and and and, and Peg and, and and many folks, uh, as I as I joined the board, I learned a lot about how things work in New Jersey, and unfortunately, in the first few years, I witnessed firsthand how difficult things were here. Um, and as a taxpayer, I take that very seriously, and as a parent, I take that very seriously. Um, and there, we make tough decisions all the time here. Um, but for me, this is such a no-brainer. Um, the way that this is working out, I think we're talking about mandatory safety that needs to be taken care of in our schools. We are in an era of very low interest rates and putting on my daytime hat, I can tell you that probably won't last forever. And we have the incredible timing and opportunity that probably won't last forever to have the state being able to fund over 40%. And what's that going to give us? That's going to give us a lot. As I said, as, in, as you saw in the video, which was, I thought, excellent. I love our theme song. I don't know who wrote it, but it was, a, it was very catchy. And we should get some lyrics for it next time. Um, but, 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 but truly, besides the mandatory safety, the fire safety, um, you know, I, I think it's important to talk about the state-of-the-art technology that we've now put in the high school, that we've now put in the intermediate school. And now the elementary school students are not going to have to be sitting out in that hallway every day. Um, and if we're truly trying to compete in this new, we used to call it the new wired world, it's really the new wireless world, and, and compete in digital technology, um, this bond, and the second question specifically, really will give us the opportunity to do that and help these kids and prepare these kids so when they're my kids' age and they're attending college, um, they really will have 
all of this extra ability and knowledge. And as the chairman of the technology committee, I can also tell you the hard work that's been done by Mr. Panero, who's here somewhere, who's usually here, um, and everyone else that's, that's worked on that committee to make sure that we're integrating all of this technology that we're talking about with the curriculum. And that's what's going on in the schools, and it makes a big difference. And I guess, you know, bottom line, I'm just really excited about this, and I really ask all of the voters to please come next Tuesday and, and vote and really consider how important this is for our wonderful community, which I've been very blessed to live in uh, now for uh, roughly 25 years. And I couldn't be prouder of this Board of Education, and I couldn't be prouder of the hard work that has gone in to this particular referendum. And it's the right time, and I'm very excited about this. Mark? Go ahead, Jen. Oh, oh thank you. Jen. Little left to say, Mitch. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, I, I just wanted to point out that uh, the um, the initial seed for these projects uh, regarding safety and infrastructure, especially, uh, came out about uh, after the Newtown, Connecticut uh, school disaster situation. Uh, the district uh, held a um, an assessment of all of our properties and uh, look to the concerns for safety and security and we were able to respond to um, a barrier prevention uh, initially with uh, operating budget expenses and some um, uh, procedural things that didn't cost as much to us and we knew that we had a next level of, uh, of safety concern that um, we would not be able to fund through our operating budget. And so this is the, uh, the genesis of Bond 1 and why it is so critical to us because it supports our further um, foundation for safety and uh, security within our schools. Um, in addition, it confronts our need to provide for upgraded infrastructure. You saw the picture, pictures of the aging boilers. Um, and I have to tell you, I was personally very impressed by the uh, testimony of the individuals on the video. I think that their, um, their personal uh, accounts of what they work with on a day-to-day -day basis really has um, touched a very individual Cord with me and I hope with, with the rest of the community. Um, in addition, as Mitch mentioned, from a technology standpoint, we have embarked on our strategy for, um, for wireless access across all of our campus. And this uh, first portion of the bond would support our elementary Wi-Fi access. So it, uh, at least the, the cabling aspect of it, um, this is a critical aspect for us to bring our youngest learners up in an environment that they're used to working uh, in at their homes and, um, and there are many instructional opportunities for them in our schools if they could have Wi-Fi access. Number two, the auditoriums of the intermediate schools suggested by our citizens um, committee. I'm very impressed that uh, we were able to work quickly to integrate that into a second question for our referendums. And I think it's the right time right now. Um, as you heard, interest rates are low, construction costs are um, still at a reasonable level, and the state will cover 40% of the total of every single project that we have presented to them. And that is really, really important. Of the total 12.6 million the state will fund about $5 million of that total. And um, that's a very um, enticing reason at this point to go ahead with this, these projects. Um, for the average homeowner, um, and these are maximum amounts. Um, I understand, Dana, when you estimate the 25 to 3% bond rates that you gave us. Right. Um, the total for 20-year bonds um, could be about $50 a year for on an, on an average home um, assessed value. 
and over at a 10-year bond, it could be under about $90 a year. And um, that's the right way to spend money right now on our facilities and for our children. So I, I look forward to a, uh, a healthy response to our referendums on Tuesday night. And I hope people will come and vote to support uh, our children and our, um, our education that we provide. Thanks, Jenny. Anybody else? I know that Dana has said this in the past, so excuse me for repetition, but I think it's important because it speaks conversely to what uh, President Oleg brought up earlier in that these estimates are done in a way that not only protects the public from uh, the, the issue that was brought up by, by one of the members of public at, la at last week's meeting, but also uh, the district, it's very prescribed the way these bonds are done. So if the bids come in and the work is uh, underestimate, the school does not have the ability to just spend those extra monies and because it is prescribed when you put these documents into the state and submit especially for matching funds if it comes in and it would be great if it came in under the budget that was presented the the school district does not have the ability to then take those monies and spend it any way they want so there's also protection for the for the public in that sense as well thanks I just wanted to thank also the community for supporting us and coming out and being on our um, our bond committee and working with us to look at our first items that were originally on our bond for uh, the 8.6 million, but also suggesting to us to look at other projects that could be done and recognizing um, this very special, it's not a special time, but this time that Ginny um, alluded to in reference to low interest rates plus a 40% rebate from the state to pay for these projects, which I don't think is on the table that often for communities like Westfield. And so I do appreciate all of their work in coming to us and, and uh, supporting us in this second bond question. And um, I do encourage everyone to vote on Tuesday for both of the referendums. And um, I think it will be, it'll be an amazing change for our school system if they both go through. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. I, I just want to thank the community members. Um, they're, they're really the ones getting the word out. Um, so the nine of us can sit here, 10, 11, 12, 15 of us can sit here and talk about it to our boo in the face. But if it weren't for them going back to their PTO meetings and, and um, sharing information that they had gathered, answering questions that people are bringing to them, they've taken the time to educate themselves so they can answer questions and if not, get it back to us. Um, then, uh, then it, it would not um, have the extent of knowledge in the community that we do. So I just want to thank them. Um, if nobody else from the board has any questions or comments, um, I'll, I'll, I'll open the floor to anyone from the public. If you'd like to come to the podium and, and ask any follow-up questions, feel free. Now's your opportunity. If you could just um, state your name and address, sure. that'd be great. Can I care? Please, yeah. Yeah, Ray Rogers, 206 Springfield Avenue, Westfield. I guess my question would be, I see the first voting item is we need. The second is kind of I want. We want. Updated order terms. I went to Roosevelt. Came out pretty good. I went to school here, fifth and sixth grade. It's more about the teachers and everything else like that. But I think the infrastructure is very important. But I guess if we go back to the 12.6 million, if we get a 40% match, then the bonds would be for about 8 million. Is that correct? Yeah. No. Dana, 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 do you want to? We have to sell bonds for the full amount, whatever we need. And then when we budget to pay it back, we would pay budget 60% of the principal and interest, and the, the state would give us the other 40% to pay back. So where does that extra 40% go? Where does that $5 million go? We, if, we, if we vote, we've appropriated 12.6 million. Well, we, we would spend the 12.6, but we would pay back only 60% of that because the state would pay the other 40%. So we would make improvements to the schools. So the taxpayer then would only have an $8, $8 million burden. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're asking the taxpayers. It would be yes. a, a burden total of $8 million versus the twelve. Because right. you know, right. you, you yes. know you're going to get the matching funds. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, correct. correct. But, we, but we, we're obligated to sell for the full amount of what we are going to spend. Okay. 
as she as Danny said. Yeah, well, I guess that wasn't clear in the in the in the letter we got. You know that that's what it is. That it's a match. But this is how we have to approve the, the full number. The that's letter being the yeah. the ballot. The ballot. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. we know. Very ambiguous. That's, yes, that's, <laughs> it's very, very transparent about where the numbers are going. After seeing the, the boilers, now I understand boilers are very expensive. That's why I can see uh, Franklin or Roosevelt and some of the schools that need boilers. That's why they're 1.2 million versus mm -hmm. Franklin only getting whatever 400,000. So, uh, and that's Wi-Fi and that's the infrastructure thing. So, so that wasn't very clear. But again, I, I see the first one is definitely infrastructure. The second, the auditorium, I think we talked about there's, there. My parents have been paying taxes for 60 years. I've been paying taxes since I bought my first house in 1989 on multiple properties in Westfield. Again, I don't have any kids in the school. I'm a product of the system. So I think, again, you're asking everybody, shop owners, everyone to give back. We need it for our kids. Well, I think uh, people move to Westfield, have the kids, and then move out. And they say, let the people before and the people after pay for all this stuff. So I think the way you fund things, the I wants, <coughs> we look at more creative ways of funding that. I understand infrastructure, teachers, schools, boilers. That's what we need. The taxpayers pick up that burden. But we pay a heavy, heavy tax in, in Westfield. You know, I know towns like Short Hills pay more uh, and things like that. But it, I tell you, it's steep when you look around the country. Uh, so again, I think the financial prudent that uh, Mitch talked about is good. But, but again, it goes back to the I wants and we need. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the wants versus needs comment, uh, that's the reason we separated it out into two bonds as opposed to bundling it all together. No, that was good. Yeah. Uh, that was good. And I like the turf fields and the roofs. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um, you know, the only thing I'll add to, to the president is that is the eye okay. wants today become major needs tomorrow at a much higher expense. And uh, there is difference and there, and there has been a distinction made between question one and question two. But don't be mistaken that, and it's only the second time I was at the auditorium uh, last week. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'd categorize it as a I want versus a need even in today's terms, but thank you. I, I will say, Mr. Rogers, that I, I think I mentioned this to you Thursday night, that I, I, I don't think any of us at this table would disagree with you that the taxpayers bear a, a significant, a hefty burden in Westfield. And, and when you talk about the need to be creative and, and the need to find alternate sources of funding, that's something that we talk about. And in fact, it's one of our district goals in this year. So um, yeah, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, and this is the mechanism that we have at this point in time to, to to take on these projects, and so that's the way we're, we're proceeding. Right, and maybe add because we, we were talking about uh, if the bonds pass, that um, the state would give us 40%, and that's in, um, if, if we do something out of our operating budget, at this point the state gives us 5%, which uh, you were talking about looking across the country and all, it's hard to find other places out of the state where a public school district receives 5% of their budget from the state. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible, uh, honestly. Um, um, but that's what, that, that's what exists right now. And, and that is difficult for communities like Westfield, and there are a number of them in New Jersey, that right now that's what the funding system is. So in this, in this way, we're able to maximize how much money we might be able to get from the state, which does help local taxpayers to get jobs done that need to be done. So hopefully the funding system in New Jersey won't always be like that, but it is what it is right now. So that's part of the, the thinking behind it. Okay. I just have one small comment, and that is I'm, I'm so proud that so many of our um, graduates of our school system have returned to the town. And I think it's what makes the town strong and vibrant and continues to bring um, to, to keep the traditions alive as well as to bring, allows to bring energy in with new families. Um, as Mitch said, he's entering his 25th year in the town and I'm entering my 30th. So uh, unfortunately, my children don't seem to think that they will settle here, but, <laughs> I, <laughs> but, but I, I do work on them. But I, but I, am, um, I am terribly impressed with all of the families who I see of have multiple generations here, and I do thank them for, uh, for keeping their legacies alive and keeping their interest in the town and, and in the educational system here. So uh, 
I, uh, I hope that that helps people understand that um, while some people do move here and move away, there is a strong undercurrent of those who love the town and will stay here um, at any cost. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, I'd like to ask the board to approve the minutes of our board meeting held on January 5th, 2016 and the private minutes of that same date. Can I have a second? Any, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We will move on to personnel. Mark. Uh, I'd like the board to consider our personnel items 1 through 15. 15 was added on the addendum at your desks. And then also 13 was modified uh, for one name correction, uh, also on the addendum at your desk. Can I have a second? second? Mitch, thank you. Any questions? Dana, please. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Christopher Lancart? Yes. Jimmy Lake? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. That would be it. Thank you. Facilities, Brendan? Uh, other than the bond that we've talked in length about tonight, uh, no report. Very good. Long range planning, Jenny? No report tonight. Policies, Chris? Oh, yeah, I'd like to ask the board to consider the one item we have, the affirmation of the superintendent's decision on the three HIV incidents that are listed therein. Can I have a second? Second. Dana. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Nothing else, Chris? Uh, nothing else. Thank you. Curriculum instruction and program, Peggy. Um, I'd like the board to consider item number one to improve the following district field trips as attached, attachment number three. Anybody? Have? Second. Let's not just Any? shout out. Thanks. Mark seconded. Any uh, questions? Conversation? Dana? Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. And our next uh, curriculum meeting is uh, January 25th, and we'll have a report at our next board meeting. Perfect. Thank you. Finance, Mark. Uh, I'd like the board to consider uh, finance items one through seven. Second, please. Ginny, thank you. Uh, also, just uh, uh, number seven, um, we'd like to uh, accept the gift of $10,000 from the Westfield Coalition for the Arts towards the purchase of new uniforms for the Westfield High School Marching Blue Devils. So thank you very much for that. Any comments? I just wanted to take a, a moment to call out number one. Um, to, I asked Peggy this morning about, um, so these are the changes that we made to the band room in response to not only staff concerns, but parent and student concerns that were brought to the board last year, that they were just basically getting squeezed out and lack of space. Um, and I think that things are going really well, that the changes have been successful, correct? They are. I mean, some might remember um, the wonderful problem we had is that the band program continues to grow, and we weren't fitting into the room any periods of the day, where we had students in the classroom every period of the day, and it wasn't working. And, um, and, and this was an example of people, people working together and being creative and finding a low-cost way to fix that problem, um, which we have done. We've made scheduling changes. We've made these adjustments um, to, the, to the room itself, and it is working well. And uh, it's a good thing because the eighth graders are already talking about joining the band in high school, so it's a good thing we made the changes because it'll be used well in the years going forward. Fantastic. We saved a little money along the way, right? Yep. That's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Dana, please. Mark Friedman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Yes. Chris Langhart. Yes. Ginny Light. Yes. Gretchen Oluk. Yes. Peggy Oster. Yes. Yes. That's it. Um, legislation, Brendan. No report. Technology, Mitch. No report tonight. I'd like to ask the board to note the notes for the record and ask if there's any unfinished business for tonight. Seeing none, do we have any new business? Liaison reports? Jenny? Yes, I have two reports. I attended the Union County Ed Services Commission Board of Directors meeting on January 6th. Um, 
and I, they uh, presented their auditor's report. They had uh, just a few items um, of um, wanted to clear their de deficit balances. Otherwise, uh, they got a healthy, clean and healthy report. I also wanted to note that they approved a revised policy on transgender students. And uh, I know that we had tabled that from our policy committee. Uh, so if it's, uh, and I polled the people at the table in Union County representatives, no other public school district has passed this yet. So I, it might be time for us to take another look uh, at the policy next week when we have our meeting. Uh, and then I attended the um, McKinley PTO meeting uh, last week. Um, and we spoke about the bond, we spoke about park scores. Uh, they are having a family science night. Every classroom and the library will be used. It's free, volunteers uh, will be um, available. This is, was wildly successful last year, and um, so this is the second annual uh, evening when families bring all their children and they have a, uh, a wonderful opportunity to experience many different um, science uh, experiments and presentations uh, given by members of the community parents as well as um, others in the community who uh, make themselves available. In addition, there was some conversation about growth mindset, which principal Mark Buna talked about, and um, I was very encouraged to hear that um, this um, concept has taken uh, hold of his interest, and he is uh, working very hard to develop growth mindset among his school teachers and uh, children. It's um, something that I've been uh, experiencing one of my uh, family members is working hard on that as an, as an intermediate school teacher in Pennsylvania. So I've been uh, able to watch her guide um, her development in that area. So I'm very thrilled that um, this has taken uh, root in one of our schools and, and if not more of our school districts, of our schools in the district. So thank you for supporting that. That's it. Any other liaison reports? <clears throat> uh, yes, I was at the town rec committee last uh, Monday. And just continuing, they continue to explore the idea of turfing and lighting some of the fields at Tamaquis, which would be of use to us as we try and alleviate our concerns and finding fields with lighting for our sports teams. So they've got plans for that. They continue to work with that and try and figure out the best way to lay that out in Tamaquis. The other thing is, uh, I guess, the coach of the crew team had requested space to store the, um, I guess they're called skulls, um, for the crew team. He actually stores them at his home in Flemington. So he was looking to see if we had school property where it could be stored. And I talked to Sandy about that, and we're looking at that. He had also contacted the town to see if they had space to store it. So hopefully we'll be able to resolve that issue for him. We do appreciate him storing that all the way in Flemington and bringing it here. Chris, is, is there, has there been any conversation at the Rec Commission about the fields? Obviously, the schools would benefit to some degree from, from that. Are they contemplating asking us for funding? That has not come up yet. I, I, I think it's being considered as part of the town's possible bonding and future capital needs. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that's it. Uh, and I would just, I should have mentioned, there's a policies meeting next Tuesday mm -hmm. as well. So, Ginny, if you have a copy of that. Uh, policy. That would be great. Any other liaison reports? Um, Y'all should have received in your packets on Friday the new committee um, or the revised committee and liaison um, assignments for the year. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, but hopefully those are set and, and we can move forward on that basis. But make sure to, to take a look at it because folks were moved around a little bit and so I don't want anybody um, missing a meeting just because they thought they weren't on a committee or, or otherwise. Um, I'll take this opportunity to recognize the public for questions and or comments. And seeing none, 
I'd ask the board to approve the following resolution. Resolve that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing matters rendered confidential by state and federal law and harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents. Resolve that any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential and the results of the discussion will be made pu public as soon as practicable. Can I have a second? Second. Ginny, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.